This is His Worship the Mayor, preparing to face the people he represents. They should be happy. Their town is thriving. It has a profitable shop, a vibrant media centre, an exciting newspaper, a fascinating museum and a new French cafe. It's even got a television unit which can be used to uncover hidden talents. Welcome to the town of Grangeton, a community run for the pupils by the pupils. For official purposes, it's also known as the Grange Primary School in Long Eaton in Derbyshire, and the head teacher is Richard Gerver. The first thing I did was to talk to the staff and the children about what they wanted Grange to be, what they aspired of, um, what they aspired for the school. Um, and the same commonal themes came through from the staff and the children, although expressed differently. And those were themes about they wanted the place to be fun and to be vibrant and to be exciting. The effect of injecting enjoyment and engaging pupils has been dramatic. A spiral of decline has turned into soaring success. Three and a half years ago when this journey started, um, our SATS results were all around the 50% mark and our Panda grades were all in the E category. Um, three and a half years later, our SATS results have doubled and we're now consistently scoring in the high 80s and 90% and our Panda grades have risen to A's and A stars. Um, and that isn't as a, as a result of some crude cramming process. The mayor is called Jake and he won the job after a closely fought election battle against Deputy Mayor Connor. Well, we have all these councillors and they may get issues from their classes and they bring it into council meetings and we try to do something about it. Connor, are you plotting against Jake? No. No? Have you come to some sort of secret agreement over the dinner table in the canteen? So, you know, you take over after a couple of terms, perhaps? Yeah, um, if, like, Jake's not here, then I'll stand in his place. Yeah, but he's not promising to stand down or anything like that? Um, not, uh, not that I know of. Good morning. Whether Jake becomes a professional politician or not, he's already learned that a high profile is all important, as you'll discover during the course of this programme. Question time happens once a week with the mayor and his cabinet, but you can't please all of the pupils all of the time. I think we should have a, um, a bell for the beginning and end of um, playtime. We'll just have to put up with it. When Grangeton was just a school, it was one of the worst in Derbyshire and had the achievement levels to prove it. The new head teacher immediately embarked on a mission to bring all the fun of the fair into school. One of the first uh, questions I asked the staff here, which looking back on it now seems a bit daft, but people went with me on it, was why can't school be more like Disneyland? In other words, why on a cold February morning, um, if a child wakes up with a sore throat, do they cough and splutter and look to the heavens and thank God that they're too ill to come to school that day? But if they woke up on the same cold February morning and they were in Paris, they would move heaven and earth to go to Disneyland. And what was the fundamental difference and why shouldn't school feel more like that? The school couldn't recreate Disney, but it could turn itself into a town. Not so much the Magic Kingdom as the Magic Municipality of Grangeton. The school shop was already in place, but now it's the Grangeton shop, run by pupils who decide when to open and what to sell. Everything healthy, of course. Have you got anything really unhealthy I could buy? Oh, not really. Got anything with a lot of sugar in? Anything with a lot of salt in? So what do you sell? <laughs> Next to open was Grangeton Media Centre. We will also have our very own Grangeton Top 10 and special birthday announcements to all of you out there. But first, let's play our first song. <laughs> On the first Tuesday after half term, you will be pleased to hear that the Language Cup is reopening. Year two are having a cake stall at their talk shop on Friday afternoon. Prices start from 10p. Radio Grangeton goes on air over three lunchtimes every week with a programme of pop and features that accurately reflects most local radio stations. What's your job? Um, a producer. What do you have to do? Got to like, put all the songs on and do the voice checks and stuff so they don't be too loud. Do your stars do, do what they're told? Yeah. They do? What if they don't? Then they get sacked. <laughs> Reading the script like that, is that very difficult? Sometimes it can be, because if the other presenter writes it, sometimes you can't read other people's writing sometimes. 
Mm, so what's the trick? What must you always do before you go on air? Um, have a run through it. And you've got a fan club yet? Um, well, when we always we always walk out the door and everyone just cheers on that one. Cheers? Do they? What do they say? I'm like, yay! Oh, so you have got a fan club. <laughs> You've got to obviously have kids who are confident enough to put the shows out. And they, they all go through an interviewing process. They're all interviewed and, if, you know, if they get the job, they get the job. I mean, we've got spare ones if others are off. But at the moment, so it just depends who wants to do what. There's so many things going off in school. They can volunteer for so many different things. Not everybody's choice would be to do radio or media, so... So the shy and retiring don't miss out, really? No, not at all. There aren't any shy and retiring children in this school. <laughs> The programme goes out live, but the features are pre-recorded by the station's reporters. This interview, and yes, that is Jake the Mayor, concerns the latest enterprise that's coming to town, the Language Café. Have you had to learn any skills to be in the Language Café? Yes, speak in French. Yes, how to deal with customer issues. If you give children the opportunities, they will constantly amaze you. Um, an example of that being the ability of some of our editors in the radio station who apparently are working towards AS level in, in media studies. Well, if you said that of an average 9, 10-year-old, people would laugh at you. But, but I think it's very, very important for us to, to understand that we shouldn't pre-censure what we think children are capable of because we're actually thinking about what our limitations are. The media centre is also used to produce films. This latest production ties in with classroom work, a modern-day version of Romeo and Juliet. This, what does the camera allow us to do that we can't do with our own eyes? Zoom in and out. Zoom in and out. We can get close-up shots, we can get long shots, we can get big open shots. Action! No! No! Cut. Pupils take responsibility for every part of the production, from the scripting to the editing. Watch out for Jake. It's quite cool because, like, you get to play with, well, not play, but do things that not many people in the country can do. Yeah, you get an opportunity. Better than sitting behind a desk, eh? Hmm, better. Pupils also make their own television programmes. This is Grangeton TV's Pop Idol contest. And this is the head teacher, clearly drawing on his first career in the theatre and, with equal clarity, demonstrating why he gave it up to go into teaching. The latest enterprise to open in Grangeton is a museum. It came as a bit of a shock to one teacher who found he was an exhibit. This is my 32nd year. Okay. So it'd be silly to ask if you've seen some changes over the years. We've seen a fair number of changes over the years, yes, from... Uh the total freedom that we had in the, uh, the early 70s until obviously some much more prescription and now you know, the, the wheel is starting to turn again. Is it turning back to how it was in the 60s and 70s? It's not turning back to how it was, but there are elements of that coming in inside a more formal structure, which What's allows us to, to develop. The museum tells the history of the Grange School, which started as a combined secondary and primary in the 1940s. It's already attracted a lot of interest from former pupils and it's planned to open up to the public. At the centre of the museum is a time tunnel. Well, we haven't really finished it yet, but we're going to. Here's the bird's eye view of the school in the 1970s. Here's the secondary department and the infants had to fit in here and the juniors were crammed all in here. And here's an idea of how many children had to be crammed into the playground. Well, these were, are what the desks were like. I wouldn't like to have a desk like that. No. Why, what's wrong with it? Because not well, very nice. if there were, someone was bullying you, then they could just trap your fingers in it and really hurt you. Why don't you need desks like that today, do you think? Is it because... It uh, might be because they've got, like, the ink hole and we use pencils, they're so not ink. All the Grangeton goings-on are reported uh, twice termly in the town's newspaper. This editorial meeting is discussing the latest issue, and some pupils are displaying definite tabloid tendencies. Yeah, about what you'd like to change, look at the front cover. Anything that you want to change on the front? Could I have a bit of picture? 
Right, a bigger picture on the front page. That's a good idea, yeah. isn't it? Jessica, <laughs> why do you think there should be a big picture on the front page? Um, because it's a bit plain. What do you think a big picture would do? Um, make it a bit more exciting. Yeah, what's your job? Um, I'm a journalist. Ah, is that a good job? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, what do you have to do? Um, write the stories. Yeah. I thought journalists were just very nosy people. When? When did it happen? Kind of. <laughs> yeah, or are they very Where important? They're quite important because they need a story. What do you think people get out of producing a newspaper? Well, confidence really. To see their stories actually in the newspaper is a real boost for their confidence. What does it do for you as a teacher? Um, well, to actually see the children writing and, and for a purpose um, and the enjoyment they get out of interviewing and taking the photographs, um, using the ICT suite as well, really putting the skills that they've learned in the classroom into practice. Grainston's Language Café is due to open in the next few weeks. The idea is that all orders and transactions take place in French. Well, most of them anyway. Bonjour, What's the matter? Customer relations is the subject being taught here with help from a locally based finance company. This is a lesson in how to handle complaints. And Jake's back in the picture. when you were a customer and you were being treated quite badly by one of the waiters. How did it make you feel, Hannah? A bit upset because you don't expect to go out somewhere for dinner and expect people to be like that and be nasty to you. You just wouldn't expect it. You'd expect people to be nice to you. It's how to deal with um, difficult customers. We wanted to make sure they were prepared for that because um, if people are giving feedback um, when they're not happy, it's a good opportunity to look at how we can make it better. Um, but it also focused on um, what was good customer service um, and uh, you know what were they aiming for and how to actually do that. Clearly, with a lot of those enterprises, there was nobody on the staff with any expertise in those areas at all. So the first thing we did was got on the phone to people who knew what they were talking about and just said, help. Um, and then it was amazing to us how quickly people from outside of education in local industry got on board. Others who have been brought into school include Radio Derby, the Derby Evening Telegraph and Erewash Borough Council. It all means that pupils, apart from finding fun in running their own town, are also gaining vocational experience long before they reach secondary school. What we need to be doing them is giving them a currency of skills which they can apply in all kinds of contexts and situations so that they themselves become more innovative, more investigative, more confident about developing and evolving flexibly in their own futures. People are gobsmacked when we talk about the idea that we've got seven, eight, nine, ten-year-olds running some of the enterprises that you've seen here today. People are, are amazed and, and can't believe it's happening. There are big plans for the future in Grangeton. The radio station is going live online, the newspaper is starting to sell advertising, and the town's opening up its own marketing department. At this rate, and with East Midlands Airport just down the road, who knows where Grangeton may end up? Or indeed, Jake.